the intro, so we're recording now. Awesome. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Tim Havens, and this is 1010 Minutes with me. Um, so these little sessions that we're doing are just to introduce people to our faculty. And so uh, today I just I started out by playing a little bass for you. And it's something that I love to do. I do every day and I've been doing every day. I don't know, most of my life. Um, so I have some slides I'm going to show you today. And then uh, that, that won't last too long. And I'll give you a chance to ask any questions um, that you might have. Uh, so yeah, why don't we just uh, get started here? So I'm going to tell you about the Michigan Tech College of Computing, a little bit about my mostly, mostly about me. This is 1010 Minutes with Tim Havens. Um, so my story uh, begins in Traverse City. I grew up in Traverse City. Uh, my parents still live in the house uh, that I lived in my whole life until I, I moved. Um, so I went to Traverse City. It was just one high school then. We actually have two. So if you had a Central High, um, that's the high school I went to. It was called Traverse City Senior High then. So, you know, right in the, the pinky of Michigan. And in senior high, um, when I grew up, like computers weren't huge in elementary school and junior high. We used computers, but mostly for like practicing typing and stuff like that. Uh, so I, I played a lot of music before that. So you can see on the left there is a, a picture of the jazz band that we had in high school. We went down to Central Michigan University. I'm the joker who uh, is above the bald guy who was our uh, director at the time. So I played the trumpet, loved it, loved playing the trumpet. And, but in my junior year of high school, maybe, maybe sophomore year of high school, junior or sophomore, I, I can't quite remember, I took a programming class. And so it was my very first like real computer class. And so we learned Turbo Pascal at the time. And, it really isn't used too much anymore, um, but it was a great language to learn. Uh, I really got into it. I really loved it. And I actually uh, got good enough where back then it was kind of like the wild west of computer days. I started doing consulting as, as a high school kid uh, programming. You didn't really have to be that great of a programmer. You were automatically good enough to consult. And then like the next year when I, um, I started dating this girl who her dad was a computer programmer for a job. And it was like the real, the first computer programmer I'd met uh, that actually did it for, for a job. And he programmed in this language called Lisp. And Lisp is this, what's it called? Functional programming language. And it was used quite a bit in artificial intelligence um, because it's a language that can program itself. And so you could actually have, you could write programs that wrote programs, which was, which was pretty cool. And so he said, you got to learn Lisp, you know, all the programmers are using it. And so I did, and it was great because he even gave me some computer hardware, which of course at the time was super expensive. And then in 1994, as a senior, um, I went to the college next door and took Fortran class. And so that's, that's how I started learning programming. So by the time I graduated from high school, I knew three languages and just knew that this was going to be, you know, a big part of my life along with music. And um, Michigan Tech. So then, so then I went to Michigan Tech after that. So I, much like you, um, I was considering many colleges at the time and came up to Michigan Tech to visit and just absolutely fell in love with the area. I love the outdoors. I love skiing. Uh, winter sports and hiking and camping and so I was like oh man this is the place for me um, and really fell in love with the undergraduate experience I thought that it was just it was a, a super time I mean it, it's it's going to be the, one of the biggest changes of your life uh, you know becoming your own person started playing a lot of music probably a little bit too much music compared to homework but I got by and so jazz tech is, that's the first Michigan Tech jazz combo I was in as a freshman. I'm kind of profiled there. So you can see I'm starting to grow out the mop, um, you know, get away from mom and dad and grow the hair long. And what's, what's great is like this really started to define like who I am as a person. Um, and I still play music to this day. You can see there the, the alumni jazz band for Michigan Tech in, in 2012. A lot of the same people that I played music with then, you know, of course, they're all grown up in engineers and scientists like myself now, so we can share all kinds of stories. But I, I, I'm really all about like experience, you know, experience is everything and get as much experience as you can. And so 
the one of the one of the experiences that really changed me as an engineer and as a scientist was this confluence of music and signal processing. So signal processing is an electrical engineering field that it was the first time I really kind of fell in love with engineering. You know, I liked the classes and I did well, but it really didn't come together until I started to see the signal processing. And as a senior, I started doing research with the Keywater Water Research Center, which is a uh, research center north of campus here. It's, um, it's, on, it's at the airport and they do a lot of automotive research and research for uh, the military, um, a lot of ground vehicle stuff, like some interactions of uh, like tank trips um, with various terrain. They do a lot of car testing there. And all of a sudden, like it just made sense to me. It all clicked. And so this is, this is one of the things that, that I kind of want to get across to you is that, you know, classes are, are really important. And you're going to come up here and you're going to be thrust into classes and learning a ton of things. But really try to seek out those, those opportunities to get experiences in your, um, in your field. And, and, you'll, and a lot of opportunities exist. So I wasn't able to do this as a senior. But nowadays, you know, we really try to get undergraduates involved in research from the get go. And so there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Um, you may have heard about the Pablis Honors College. Uh, they have undergraduate research programs. So the undergraduate research internship program is a way that you can do research with a professor and get paid, you know, $1,600 a year, which is great. You know, some pocket money or money for tuition, whatever it happens to be. And so this is something, it's a competitive fellowship and you can apply and you can find a professor to work with. and. Um, Two years ago, uh, a freshman who, who wanted to do this came to me and we started talking and she's now been doing research with me for, this is her third year. And uh, it's, it's been a great experience for her. It's, it's been great for me because, you know, I get to work with her each year and you know, build up that, the, those research skills. And there's also summer undergraduate research fellowships where you can earn $4,000 over the summer during doing 10 week paid internships and uh, Michigan Space Grant Consortium Fellowships. So that's, all of these are uh, competitive. So, you know, you really have to do well in your classes and build up that resume, um, have a good idea. And, but the first step is really like, go talk to a professor about what they do and, and find some interest. Uh, the Institute for Computing and Cyber, System, which, Cy Cyber Systems, which is the research arm of the College of Computing, uh, does an undergraduate research fellowship as well. So I direct that uh, institute and we kind of we mimic what the Pablis Honors College does in order to get people involved and really aside from that a lot of students will seek out professors so if you come up here and you're like man I, I, I really want to get that research experience um, talk to your professors about what they're doing and they may say hey you know I, I have a little time to to mentor you in research and usually you get paid to do it um, and even if you don't get paid, it's an invaluable experience and will change, you know, your trajectory and the types of jobs you're, you qualify for after you, after you finish. So after I graduated from Michigan Tech um, with my bachelor's, I did a master's degree also at Michigan Tech. I just went on and, and did a, another master's degree, did a master's degree in about a year. Uh, Michigan Tech has a, a, a program where you can do a master's degree. It's called uh, oh, what, what's it called? Somebody's on the line that knows what this is called. It's, it's skipping my mind right now. But anyways, you can accelerated actually- Accelerated Masters. Thank you very much, Adrian. The Accelerated Masters program. You can double count some classes and actually finish up a master's degree in another year, which really pays off in salary and the types of jobs. So I did that and then I went to work at MIT Lincoln Labs, which is the research uh, center part of Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And so out there, I continued to play music as I have everywhere I've gone. Um, it's always been a, a big part of my life. So I'm showing some of the bands that I was in there. Uh, of course, you have to act funny in, in band photographs. Um, either you have to look really serious or completely uh, like a ham. So I, I covered all bases. Um, but what I did with most of my time is I researched the airborne laser. So the airborne laser is, was a 747 jet with a giant laser on the front of it uh, with the intention of shooting down ballistic missiles with that laser. And so 
Uh, the idea was that after, after missiles are, are launched, uh, you, can, you can shoot them out of the air. And I studied this for five years, did a lot of modeling and simulation um, on all the systems. And it, it's crazy. Like a 747 jet is huge. If you've ever been in a 747 jet, you know how giant they are. This laser system took up the entire 747 jet, just a, an incredibly complex system. And it was just, it was really rewarding to work on that and working, work with the people at MIT Lincoln Labs. As, interestingly, I also got the uh, chance to play a gig at Lincoln Labs as part of my job with Skunk Baxter, who was a guitar player who played with the Doobie Brothers and Steely Dan and many other um, bands um, of that era. He was a session musician. Your parents might know who he is, um, but he's the guy in front with the with the beard. Um, just it was it was such a cool opportunity. Uh, he came to give a talk because he's like a rock star turned defense think tank guy. So just kind of an interesting person. Um, after working at Lincoln Labs for five years, I, I realized that, okay, this isn't what I want to do with my life. I don't want to sit at a desk and just do research all day, every day. I really want to work with people. I did some teaching as a master's student and thought that would be an exceptional opportunity uh, to get back into that. And so I took the opportunity, I followed the love of my life across the country to the University of Missouri, um, which you see right in the middle of there, the University of Missouri Tigers. And so there I continued to play music. And so you can see, you know, we're keeping up the, uh, the theme of the band photograph there, uh, the funk band that you see at the top. I also got to play with the, the top uh, jazz band on campus, so which was a lot of fun playing with graduate students who were studying jazz, phenomenal players, and um, worked with them. I actually played a, in a band with the jazz director himself, and so it was, it was just, it was really cool. And I also got to travel out of the country for the very first time of my life, and so you, this is a picture of me in Hong Kong. I'd, I'd never been outside the country. Um, as, a, as a PhD student, my advisor sent me up to Hong Kong by myself and uh, had, I had a great uh, time there. Gave a talk on my research at the World Congress of Computational Intelligence. Um, one of the things that's cool about graduate school is often, you know, your graduate lab is kind of like a family. And so you can see here, we would always, whoops, we would always celebrate, let's see if I can get that back. We would always ce celebrate Talk Like a Pirate Day. So that was kind of our lab celebration. And there I spent most of my time researching uh, pattern recognition and machine learning, which I kind of carry on to this day. Uh, this is a system that the Army developed in order to find explosive hazards uh, in the roads. So this was a big problem when we were um, in the Middle East. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of explosive hazards. And so we were trying to develop systems that could find those before uh, being uh, driven over. And I, I continue that research uh, to this day. So PhD was one of the best times of my life. Um, really loved it. Uh, and so then after that, I went to Michigan State uh, in Lansing and did some postdoc work for two years. Uh, con continued to work with my research. Got to travel to Australia and many other countries with that. And then finally got the opportunity to come back to Michigan Tech. I, I love it up here. Um, and was just jumped at the chance to, to become a professor at Michigan Tech. And so now we're back to here to Michigan Tech. And so here at Michigan Tech, oh, surprise, surprise, I continue to play music. Um, so this is a club that's in town that uh, is going to be reopening, uh, assuming, you know, things get, get figured out in the future with COVID, um, which they will eventually. And so you can, I, I, I like this picture because one of the other members of the band is Dan Furman, who's the chair of Applied Computing, who's an absolutely world-class piano player. Um, I also have a band called The Choppers. You know, we like shiny pants. Yeah, and you can see Mike LeBeau is the advisor from Biomedical Engineering. He's in that band. So there's just, a, Michigan Tech, you know, is a community and we have a lot of uh, talented people. and. And so you'll find that the, the experience is more than just class. Um, we have a student versus faculty hockey game. Um, so there I am hoisting the Maxwell Cup, which is actually an antenna. So we, we, we took an antenna and we made it into a, uh, a hockey trophy. The faculty won. Surprise, surprise. So here is 
over on the right is a picture of my computational intelligence class. I always dress up on Halloween with my classes, and so these are the students that chose to dress up with me. Um, maybe you've recognized that character, the, I'm, I'm the horse guy. And down here, I show this because this is uh, some undergraduates that I did research with, and this is one of our drones that we have in my lab. So I run the Pattern Recognition and Intelligent Machines Engineering Lab, um, Prime Lab. And we do a lot of things with sensing the world, uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence, deep learning, if, you, if you've heard of that. Uh, we have a program right now, we're working with the Army to develop uh, ways in which you can make robots more robust um, in operational scenarios. Uh, and that's been a lot of fun. Uh, so we're, we're developing ways that robots can automatically detect, like if somebody's shining a laser in the camera or something like that, and then adapt to that. So College of Computing, now we'll kind of come full, full circle. This is a picture that we took, uh, obviously, more than a year ago with our brand new banner that we put on the, the bridge between the computer science or College of Computing building and uh, the library. Um, the, the, really a great group of people. I've, I've absolutely loved working with the College of Computing faculty, and it's been really fun to build this program. Um, I think you're really smart in considering computing as a future career. It's something that's never going to go away. Uh, I was reading an article where they were looking at you know, various human jobs and which human jobs will last the longest in the face of artificial intelligence. And the last one on the list was like artificial intelligence researcher. And I always tell my research or my students that I'm training you to become the doctors of the artificial intelligence that are run, going to run the world someday. So, you know, the artificial intelligence will come to you and say, oh, I have a headache. And, um, we have a lot of different uh, degree programs. We have bachelors in computer science, computer network and system administration, cybersecurity, software engineering, electrical engineering technology. And then we have masters in computer science, cybersecurity, health informatics, and mechatronics, and, a, and the doctor of philosophy in uh, computer science. And then on the research side, we have all kinds of research going on. Um, that a lot of it includes undergraduates. So if you're interested in that, just you know, talk to the professors that you like, um, walk the halls, well, ideally, you know, assuming that we can get back to normal soon, um, or come talk to me. Uh, so I, I'm the Associate Dean for Research in the College of Computing and also run the, the Institute of Computing and Cyber Systems. So I kind of have my finger on, on the pulse of all the research that's going on. So that's one zero one zero minutes with me. So at this point, I'm just going to kind of shut off the PowerPoint and and give you a chance to ask the questions that you have. We also have uh, Christine on the line um, who can answer questions more for the, from the greater university spec perspective. And I heard Dr. Minerick, uh, who's the Dean of the College of Computing on the line as well. And then we also have some faculty. I see Nathir up there. Um, so we'll do our best to, to answer your questions. put them in the chat or you can turn on your microphone. It's up to you. I have a, a softball question. Have you done, have you ever done any engineering with music? That's, that's, that's a really good question, Nathir. Um, so many people have asked me this question, like, why don't I just, you know, completely merge the two? Um, part of it, is I, I don't necessarily want to merge the two because music is such a meditation for me. It allows me to completely remove myself from my work that goes on every day. Uh, it's kind of like doing sports in that you're really terrible at it if you're thinking about something else. So it forces you to like get into the zone. Um, and so I, I kind of can uh, separate myself from it, but I'm really geeky in my music stuff so yeah i know you can probably see that's i have a whole bunch of like effects pedals in that case back there i have a bunch of basses on the wall there i have basses downstairs including my upright acoustic bass but one of my basses um, is very unique in that it has a system built into it that has an arduino computer that automatically detects which fret that i'm pressing down and so i can play the bass like a keyboard so it can play keyboard sounds as i play along with the bass so it's a, and then 
so I program that and, and tinker around oh. with it. And so that there's, yeah, there, there is some, you know, overlap there. I designed a light system for the band that interacts with that bass too. So certain LEDs will turn on for each note and Ooh, <laughs> awesome. stuff like that. That's cool. Yeah, I totally understand. You need an escape. Yes. Yeah. From work. It, yeah, yeah. I think everybody needs that. So there's a question, uh, what type of internships can I get from Michigan Tech from the College of Computing? So that's a really good question. So there's there's a lot of different ways that um, you can get involved with internships. So there's like the academic internships, academic year internships that I discussed with the Pablo Honors College of the ICC, where uh, you get paid a little bit of money to work with a professor. And it's usually, you know, five to 10 hours a week, depending on you know, the, what's going on in the courses um, that you have. You know, courses are most important. You got to get good, good grades. Um, but then there's a lot of summer internships available. And so we have uh, a lot of uh, companies uh, that are very interested in Michigan Tech graduates. And so we run a career fair both in the fall and the spring um, and huge numbers of companies. I think over 300 companies came to the last in-person one we had. I mean, it just keeps growing every year. And so there's always internships and what something else called co-ops, basically the same thing um, with with companies where you can you can make pretty good money over the summer doing those uh, with, the, with, the, with the companies. There's also, um, you know, you could do like the summer undergraduate research fellowships, which is like an, an internship working with a professor on their research program. So if you have aspirations to like go to graduate school or become a professor yourself, you know, that'd be a good opportunity to learn, you know, about academic research and, and what you do as, a, as, an, as an academic. Um, so there's, yes, there's, there's a, a lot of opportunities. We have students that go to Silicon Valley, work with Google, Facebook, Amazon. I've had students go to like self-driving car companies. Um, there's local, co local companies that have internships too. If you want to stay up here and enjoy the beautiful summer weather and nature that we have so good question what do you recommend to get ready for entering as a freshman um so as far as like getting involved with with computer programming or really whether you're choosing uh, computing uh, major or something else at Michigan Tech, um, we kind of assume that most freshmen come in uh, with what I guess we would consider the normal high school class experience. So in computer, say you were going to computer science, we assume that you don't have any programming experience. So even somebody who has never programmed can come in, enter our computer science program, take the beginning computer science programming courses, learn how to become a great software developer, learn the languages necessary to, to do that. And it's really, it's, it's, it's more about, you know, the, the skills and the style and, and the fundamentals of software development rather than just learning a language. So after that, um, you, you'd be surprised, like you might learn one language, but then you can go off on your own and learn a different language very easily because programming is programming when you learn it the correct way. Um, as far as that's concerned at Michigan Tech, we really want to, when we're looking at you for admission purposes, I think the things that we probably look the most closely when we're looking at the computing degrees is how you've been doing in your math programs. Um, in particular, I think that if you have the opportunity to take advanced level math, that's definitely going to be something that we will look more heavily on. I would say don't go out there and take 100 AP classes just to take AP classes and then get C's in all of them. Um, so pick and choose what you're really good at and try and challenge yourself in high school because that's not only gonna help for admission purposes, but that'll also help you prepare for college. Part of that is finding that balance. Uh, is it possible to shadow a research project for a day? Um, I think definitely. I think if you found a professor or heard about a research project that you were interested in, 
like going to talk to them, um, I, speaking for myself, whenever students come talk to me about my research, I'm willing to talk to them as much as they want to talk about it. Because usually, you know, it kind of turns into interest and then you start to develop a relationship and, you know, then you're, they're doing research with you. And, you know, that's what it's all about. Um, so typically uh, what I will do is, you know, chat with students about research, you know, so, show them what we're doing, take them to the lab, introduce them to my graduate students. And then usually I let my graduate students take it from there. I mean, the graduate students are really the ones who are in the trenches doing the research. Um, so, you know, they can show you like the robots that we're using, the computer code that they're developing, um, results that they're uh, computing, whatever it happens to be. And honestly, sometimes it's really just nice to meet other students and hear about their experiences, say, whether it's a, as an undergraduate or a graduate student. And, and uh, it's, it's a good way to figure out like, oh, yes, is that something I'm interested in? So yes, I, it's absolutely possible. What is a typical winter like at Michigan Tech and what do students do for entertainment? Um, so a typical winter is really not like our current winter. Uh, we're starting to get snow. I mean, we have snow on the ground, don't get me wrong. Um, that's rare that we don't. Uh, but we've had, I think it's we're in the 70s of inches, maybe close to 80 now. I, I don't even think it's maybe that much. Um, but last year, uh, I saw that we had like 200 inches of snow at this time. So lots of snow in the winter. Um, it's a great opportunity to get involved with the winter sport, whether that's ice skating or skiing of either type, uh, cross country or downhill. Um, it's free for students to ski at the, at the hill um, or to cross country ski. Like the part of the student experience fee is that you basically get all the student uh, or the university owns stuff for free, like golf even uh, in the summer. So the and cross country skiing is really where it's at. I mean, it's second to none uh, here. We have miles and miles and miles of cross country skiing. You can take free courses uh, through the ski club. Even if you don't have equipment for like ten dollars a year, you can just get uh, free rentals for the for the season through the ski club. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do. And what do students do for entertainment? Okay, there's, there's, it really depends on the person. There's all kinds of things. And I believe that Michigan Tech does a better job of providing, you know, what, you know, what the, this is what the parents want here, the wholesome entertainment options for, for the students. Uh, there's activities going on all the time and they're fun. I mean, there's, there's so much going on. It's so different than when I was a student where I just actually, as an undergraduate, I played a lot of guitar and went to classes. Um, but there's there's things going on every weekend, lots of the weeknights. There's all kinds of shows. You know, things are a little different now with COVID, but you know, it'll we're gonna get back to stuff like that. Um, activities, clubs, um, all kinds of things. Christine, am I missing anything that should be mentioned? No, we have like 230 clubs and organizations. So essentially you know, find something that you love. Keweenaw Days is the first Friday of classes and that's a really great opportunity to see what clubs and organizations are available to you. So try something new. Or if you, we don't have what you've done in high school, start a new club or organization. That's really easy to do. That's how we got to 230. Yes, and the winter carnival is, is almost here, right? It is, yeah. So you may have heard of Winter Carnival. Uh, students spend a, a lot of January and early February building big snow statues. Um, so that's another thing that they can get, get involved with uh, in the winter. A um, lot, lot of fun. A lot of fun. So here's a question that just came through the chat. What type of career possibilities exist other than teaching that are people interactive focused? I think this is a, a really good question. And certainly, you know, I said that I, I wanted more people interactive focus in, in my career. Um, and I knew I knew I wanted to teach because I had done that before. I really like working with students. Um, it kind of keeps you young as a person too. Uh, but there are so many careers that engineers and scientists can get involved with that are people interactive focused. 
So really, at this point, most engineering and science jobs are people interactive focused because everything is done in teams. And you'll find that out here, you know, at tech, you know, a lot of the work that you're going to do is going to be on teams. Um, you could get involved with an enterprise program, which is uh, like, a, like a team research experience. Uh, you can start as a freshman and all four years of your uh, undergraduate career uh, work on an enterprise program. And so they have things from like aerospace where they build satellites or, or uh, like moon rovers and stuff like that. And one of our teams just like actually won a NASA competition of building a moon rover. Uh, we have an enterprise that is called the Sense Enterprise, which does a, it's a Navy focused uh, enterprise. So we, do, we do a lot of water stuff um, in that enterprise. Uh, and uh, there's a gaming enterprise in computer science. Just there's, there's so many things. Um, so really everything that you're gonna do is gonna be teaming. And so if you really wanna then go farther in, in people interactive focused jobs, um, you could also think about uh, going in a career path where you're more on the business side. So there's a lot of engineers and scientists who will go on to get a, a MBA after, afterwards. And that's very, very people interactive focus. So yeah, there's, there's tons of options. Like if you want to be that, um, certainly sitting at a desk and, and programming is an option that's available to computer scientists, but it's not the only one. I can say too, both my husband and my brother are computer scientists and my husband works for an automated building control company. And so he's actually a project engineer working with the different places that they're pro doing heat design, light design, ways to make energy efficient buildings. And so he's interacting with people every day so that he can program um, more effectively. And my brother works in the finance division and he actually is making software for a finance company. So he really, I think, um, is client-based. So he meets with the clients, talks about what they need and what changes they need. And then he, go back, he goes back and programs them. So um, definitely both ways that they're interacting with people on a daily basis. Okay, we have a long question. What impacts do AP classes have on your freshman year schedule? I'm taking an AP Comp Sci class. I was wondering if I would be placed higher based on my AP test scores. Uh, is there a link or is there a link with information about AP classes and what classes Michigan Tech accepts? Um, that's a question I don't know the, the answer to. Uh, Christine, can you point us in the, in the right direction? Wonderful, perfect. Yep, there is the link. And so if you go to that page, what it does is it breaks down what the class is and then what the score is so that you need to get to get credit at Michigan Tech. It's mostly fours and fives, but some are three or higher. And then if you look, it says what credit's granted. It gives you this really like weird code. Well, those are our, our codes here at Michigan Tech that tell us what the classes are. So if you go to our course catalog, you'll be able to um, find out exactly what class you're getting credit for. But it does list on here how many credits you're getting. So as you start to look at the different flow charts for the different majors and things like that, and those codes will start to match up. So, so one thing that I can say about that, um, from my experience, so I took AP courses in high school, and when I got here, there it was in the in the math. Um, I kind of had a choice of whether to take this one course. So I took AP Calculus, and at that time we were like on the the we were on the trimester system, so we had three terms in our year, and I I could have taken like the full year of calculus, or I could take like two thirds of the year. And so they kind of gave me this choice because, you know, they weren't quite sure, you know, did I get everything in that third course in calculus? And so I actually decided to retake, you know, that what I consider to retake that that third option. I'm not sure if that's it's like that these days, but I, I found that that was actually very valuable um, to kind of get that material again. Uh, so if that's something that where you're like on the fence of whether you should not take it or or take it, I would say take it. You know. It, there's education is never wasted. You might find some things are repeated, but I'm sure that there's a lot of things that uh, you'll find uh, that are new or it reinforces the knowledge that you already have and you'll be that much better at it. 
So at Michigan Tech, we will schedule you for your first semester of classes. And how that happens is looking at what you've taken in high school and how you've done in those courses and what majors you're looking at. But that isn't set in stone. During orientation, you're gonna meet with your academic advisor and that's where you can have conversations um, about like, do you want to be moved up to Calc 2 or would you rather take Calc 1 again um, and maybe add an elective class, something a little fun or different um, besides just your standard like computing classes, math classes, things like that. So um, don't st stress too much about those course choices because you're gonna have an opportunity to meet with your advisor to talk over those schedules. How do students typically get around town? So Houghton Hancock is very small. Um, you can walk pretty much everywhere you need to walk. Uh, and there's a shuttle service uh, that's free of, available to students that takes you to you know, like the Walmart or, or the grocery store. Well, Walmart is a grocery store um, or other places around town. Uh, it's very, very easy to get around. Um, I live in Hancock, which is across the bridge uh, from Houghton. And I, I will tell you that my partner, who is a uh, professor in humanities, uh, doesn't have a driver's license. So she's never had a driver's license and she has no problem getting anywhere. Of course, I, I can drive, but, um, but she walks most places and there's no problem. Get some good boots, obviously for winter. Are some computer science majors much harder than others? If so, which are the most difficult and which are easiest? Um, so computer science, so I'll, I'll kind of answer both questions because I think your answer asking is like College of Computing majors. So computer science is a major within the College of Computing. So that's one of our degree programs. Um, the other degree programs, um, I'll bring those back up on the, on the list that I have here. So here are other programs, uh, computer science, computer network and system administration, cybersecurity, software engineering, and electrical engineering technology. I would say um, it really, it, it depends on, on the person um, and, and your interests. I think that certainly school is, is not easy and college is, is tougher than, than high school. Uh, so I wouldn't say that any of these are more or less difficult than the, than the other. I hope that answers your question. Think, you should do I what think, you're interested in. Exactly, I, that, I was gonna say that. If, it, if you're interested in it, it'll be easy. <laughs> yep, yeah. The easiest way to never work a day of your life is to do what you love. Yeah, personally, you know, when I was uh, getting into college, I didn't know what I wanted, but I knew there were certain things I don't want. So I started avoiding the things I was sure that I don't want to do. And I ended up as an electrical engineer. <laughs> Well, Nathir, maybe, um, so uh, a major that I didn't mention um, is the BS in mechatronics. So maybe you could just say, you know, a couple sentences about oh. what mechatronics is. Sure, sure. Yeah, mechatronics uh, uh, combines uh, mechanical, electrical, and computing, uh, and focuses on application. For example, uh, you know, programming uh, a machine on a factory floor. You know, this is not classical knowledge that you can find in books really. This is stuff you have to train to do because it's very applied, you know, and there's not much theory, but there's a lot of uh, programming and not necessarily using just text languages. Sometimes, oftentimes it's block diagram kind of languages. So in mechatronics, you learn the basics of mechanical and electrical and a bunch of languages that are very applied. We learn how to use them. And I think it's a perfect major if you're not sure what you really like. It's a perfect way to explore different fields. And uh, it is a, a perfect uh, uh, platform to find a master degree that you like, because you would be 
able to do a master's in mechanical or electrical or computer or MBA or anything you like. So if you're kind of undecided and you like everything, then mechatronics is a good choice. You know, when I was studying my master's, I had the choice to, uh, to, to pick a lot of my classes. And I, I picked all kinds of classes, you know, neural networks, computer networking, uh, software engineering, uh, low power computer architecture. And I picked, I tried to be as wide as possible because I was just interested in everything. And I think uh, mechatronics, you know, is is a, is a good place to be if you're if you're not sure what you like. Uh, we have nice labs uh, for industrial automation and robotics. You know, those robots that build cars on their own, kind of. We have those, and we learn how to program them. Uh, plus, of course, there's mechanical uh, courses, uh, how to draw and. Um, uh, how to how to draw in 3D, you know, in AutoCAD. Uh, you learn about pneumatics, hydraulics. Yeah, so it's kind of a mixed degree. Yeah. I would be happy to answer any questions about, about it if, uh, if there's any. So Nathir, I got a question here. And the question is, um, what majors or disciplinary areas do you think will be in highest demand in five to 10 years? And um, so I'll answer from one perspective and then you can answer um, from your perspective as well. Um, what we are seeing is a major uptick in those degrees that do require a level of understanding of computing. Um, there is an increased demand in those that under, understand the systems level and um, so systems engineering, that sort of thing really is, is increasing. I think the reality is that um, what Dr. Haven said, you know, choose something that you really enjoy. Um, cybersecurity, you can take that different angles. You can look at um, building software um, that is um, highly secure, or you can look at networks and how to be able to secure a network. And we have tracks for both of those options. Um, so I think we're gonna see that computing um, just continues to take a larger and larger role. So Nathir, do you wanna finish the rest of that? Yeah, this is actually not an easy question, but <laughs> if you think of the trends, you know, computers are getting faster, better, smaller, cheaper. So they can do more and somebody has to program these. And these, these computers will open up new, um, new possibilities, new sensors to, to create new science, you know, uh, high speed connections, cloud computing, intelligence. So yeah, we're just going to see a lot of, of, of intelligence happening and a need for computing. However, I would also argue that the classical fields of, uh, let's say, of science, chemistry, uh, electrical engineering, and uh, mechanical engineering, those will always be important. But they're kind of boring, maybe. <laughs> and they're harder, by the way. I think classical disciplines are more difficult than computing. Because in computing, you have a lot of uh, just uh, libraries that you get and tutorials and stuff happens immediately and there's not much theory to be honest it's just an experience but if you if you go uh, to classical sciences uh, and engineering disciplines it, it can become really hard there's a lot of math <laughs> any other questions thank questions. you for joining us oh sorry did you have something Oh, I was going to say questions are free. <laughs> so, there aren't any other questions. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.